Good day everyone. So I and my partner was given a task to discuss the Unit 1, Lesson 2, The Functions of Art. So here's our presentation. Please let me borrow your ears and your eyes for you to listen and hear this important matter about the functions of an art. First, let me give you some function of an art background. Art as an expression. Art empowers our faith in the nobility of man or what we call humanism. The creation of beauty is art. Art can be an instrument to know thyself. Art is freedom in every sense. Great art tells meaningful stories. So, there are the three categories of the function of an art. So, what are those three categories? The three categories are the physical functions of art, the social functions of an art, and the personal function of an art. So, first, let us tackle what is the physical function of an art. Physical function of an art it is often the easiest to understand. Works of art that are created to perform some service have physical functions. Architecture, any of the crafts, and industrial design are all types of art that have physical functions. Physical function usually relates to items that can be used for a practical purpose because of their physical structure despite their artistic appeal. So now let me make you see some example of the physical function of art. The physical function of art can be found in artwork that are crafted in order to serve some physical purpose. Architecture, jewelry making, interior design all serves physical functions, as what this picture shows. This famous basket by Datsu Lali, a famous Indian basket maker, are an example of functional art. They are art, but they also serve a purpose. So it can be called also as a physical function of an art. This artwork also has used for a purpose or a function. So it can be also considered as the function of an art. So another category of a function of art is the social function of an art. Well, when we say social functions of an art, What comes in your mind? So art has a social function when it addresses aspects of collective life. As opposed to one person's point of view or experience. Political art, skewed to whatever message, always carries a social function. Art depicts social conditions, performs social functions. Additionally, satire performs social functions. Sometimes, having specific pieces of art in a community can perform the social function of elevating that community's status. 
So let me show you some social functions of an art artworks. These two pictures shows the social function of an art. One cannot conceive of a society without art, for art is closely related to every aspect of social life. These are some examples. This one was a family portrait. So artists may produce art to reinforce and enhance the shared sense of identity of those in the family, community, or civilization. A family portrait is an example of a social function in art. This portrait of Queen Victoria of England, 1846, by Franz Xavier, one, Winter Halter and her family is a great example. Artists create to reinforce a shared sense of identity of community or civilization. So this is the exam some examples. Another function of art is the personal functions. So, what is a personal function? Personal function often the most difficult to explain. There are many types of personal function and they are subjected and will. Therefore, vary from person to person. An artist may create out of a need of self-expression or gratification. She or he might have wanted to communicate a thought or a point to the viewer. Perhaps the artist was trying to provide the aesthetic experience both for self and viewers. A piece might have been meant to merely entertain others. Sometimes peace isn't meant to have any meaning at all. Example of the personal function of an art. This artwork was an Edvard Munch mother died when he was very young and one of his sister died when he was 14. His painting entitled The Sick Child Shock viewers who were used to seeing happy paintings with bright colors. The work was meant to remind viewers of personal family tragedies. Perhaps the artist wanted to tell them to appreciate what they had in their life. This painting was based on his experience. Or on the feelings inside him. Another personal function of art is that of religious service. Lots of examples for this aren't there. Finally, sometimes art is used to assist us in maintaining ourselves as a species. Biological functions would obviously include fertility symbols in any culture, but I would also invite scrutiny of the ways we adorn ourselves in order to be attractive enough to well mate. So this one can be also an example of a personal function which shows the religious service. So this one shows the anxiety. 
this work was by Edward Munch in 1864-1944, pioneer of the Expressionist movement. This another one. This another example by Jean Jacques Rousseau, one of the philosophers in 1712 to 1778, shows that never exceed your rights and they will soon become unlimited. These are some examples also of the personal function of an art. So if you have or you wanted to have some more information about the functions of an art, just click the link below. Philosophical import of arts. Integrity. As a concept has to do with perceived consistency of our actions, values, methods, principles, expectations, and outcome. Integrity means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles that you refuse to change. Integrity gives us foundation from which to draw on future projects. We automatically know our strength because we have proven it to ourselves. This one is really important. Integrity is our secret backup system. What is artistic integrity? Always painting with passion. Never copying but taking ideas and tweaking them to make them our own. Being original, not normal. Having the courage to take a chance. Always remembering your artistic vision comes from your life, your thoughts, your courage. Creating a painting because it comes from your soul and not for recognition or prizes. Being willing to be scared to create on the edge. To continue creating when doubt in yourself appears. Doing your very best each and every day. Proportion consonants. Proportion and scale are principles of art that describes the size, location, or amount of one element in relation to another. As a fundamental element in artistic work, proportion and scale are quite complex. There are also many different ways that they are used by artists. Scale is used in art to describe the size of one object in relation to another. Each object is often referred to as a whole. Proportion is a very similar definition but tends to refer to the relative size of parts within a whole. In this case, the whole can be a single object like person's face or the entire artwork as in a landscape. For example, if you are painting a portrait of a dog and a person, the dog should be at the correct scale in relation to the person. The person's body and the dog as well should be in a proportion to what we can recognize as a human being. Essentially, scale and proportion help the viewer make sense of the artwork. If something seems off, then it can be disturbing because it's unfamiliar, yet artists can use this to their advantage as well. Some artists purposely distort proportions to give the work a certain feel or to relay a message. The photomontage work of Hannah Hodge is a great example much of her work is commentary on issues and she blatantly plays with scale and proportion to emphasize her point. That said, there is fine line between poor execution of proportion and the purposeful distortion of proportion. Proportion and scale help give a piece of art balance. We instinctively have a sense of balance that's how we can stand up straight and that relates to our visual experience as well. Balance can be symmetrical, formal balance or asymmetrical balance as informal balance and proportion and scale are key to our perception of balance. 
symmetrical balance arranged objects or elements so they are evenly weighted such as your nose in the center of your eyes a symmetrical balance means that objects are placed to one side or another leonardo da vinci's vitruvian man 1490 is a perfect example of proportion in the human body this is the familiar drawing of a man with a rectangle that is within a circle. Da Vinci used this figure as a study of the proportions of the body. His precise representation examined what people thought was the perfect male body at the time. We see this perfection in Michelangelo's David statue as well. In this case, the artist used classic Greek mathematics to sculpt a perfectly proportioned body. The perception of beautiful proportions has changed over the ages. In the Renaissance, human figures tend to be plump and healthy, not obese by any means, particularly the women because it implied fertility. The proportion of the face is another concern for artists. People are naturally attracted to symmetry and facial features, so artists tend toward perfectly spaced eyes in relation to the nose and a properly sized mouth. Artists learn this from the beginning with tutorials in a properly proportioned face. Concepts like golden ratio also guide our perception of beauty and in how the proportion scale and balance of elements make a subject or the entire piece more attractive. And yet, Perfect proportions are not the only source of beauty. As Francis Bacon put it, there is no excellent beauty that had not some strangeness in the proportion. Scale affects our perception of perspective as well. There is also something to be said about the scale or size of an entire piece of art. An object that can fit in our hands but includes delicate intricate carvings can have as much of an impact as a paintings that it fit tall. For this reason, we tend to marvel more at works that are at the extreme of either range. It's also why many pieces of art fall within a center range of 1 to 4 feet. Regents Clarity Regents belongs to being considered precisely as beautiful. It is in being that which catches the eye or the ear or the mind to make us want to perceive it again. Gilson 2035 Regions is a bit more difficult to pinpoint than the other standards. Regions signifies the luminosity that emanates from a beautiful object which initially seizes the attention of the beholder. This trait is closely related to the medieval notions concerning light. For example, in terms of natural light, there is a sense in which the paintings in a gallery lose some of their beauty when the lights are turned off because they are no longer being perceived. However, Thomas also connects beautiful things with the divine light, all form through which things have been is a certain participation in the divine clarity or light. And this is what Dionysius adds that particulars are beautiful because of their own nature, that is because of their form. Thomas commentary on the divine names 4.6. This quote provides another account of Thomas connecting all beauty to the beauty of God as the cause of all beauty.